Are you struggling for consistency in your sim racing? Does your I rating look like a roller coaster? If so, we have good news for you. The way to get more consistent is to first understand what you're doing differently than the professionals. And VRS is the answer. With our competitive subscription, you will have the telemetry, setups, tutorials, and everything else you need to fully analyze your driving. Our data packs and the ability to compare your driving with the best in the world will show you exactly where to adjust your inputs, change your driving line, and shave seconds off of your lap times. And our powerful and precise Direct Force Pro Wheelbase and Precision Pedals are being used by some of the world's best drivers. All these champions agree that VRS hardware is not just the best on the market, it's also priced well below the competition. So if you're looking to upgrade to direct drive and the best pedals in sim racing, VRS is your answer. If you want to get better, get faster, and make it happen sooner rather than later, you owe it to yourself to find out why so many people are switching to VRS. You'll be so glad that you did. Visit www.virtualracingschool.com and learn why the best use VRS. Hello and welcome to Super Sunday on Apex Racing TV. And of course, can only be one thing. The Weekend Warriors are back for another double header of fun, excitement and drama. And this week for Round 5, we head to the Rolling Hills of Salinas County on the Monterey Peninsula. And well, it's the one, the only, Laguna Seca. I'm Tim Cox, we've got Smoothie Kuma in the virtual production trailer. Charles Bushell will be joining me very shortly, but first off, before we get underway, let's have a take a little look at the championship standings. First off, into spec one, Christian Banker leads the way there and starts to open up a really healthy margin at the top of the table, some 50 points clear of Jason Green. And of course, uh, this category, four different winners from the opening four rounds so far. Overstreet lies in third, and uh, it's a spec to Paul Stevens there is at top of the table with Mr. Consistency, realistically. But it's not as strong as margins what you see in spec one, with Harris only some, what, 40, 30, 40 points behind. With Saunders only three points behind him, it is tight at the top with Fernando Steno, Bonus, Boss Good, Verbruge, and Carter running out your top 10 there. Crossing to the Masters. Now, this really blew wide open last week because quite a few drivers elected to, I don't know, watch some uh, much faster and more aerodynamic cars go around the track instead of participate. They know who they are, but there are quite a few of them are back this week, which is good to see. But despite all that, Antonio Ray still leads the category. Yogmani in second, but that gap only five points adrift between the pair of them. And then we've got a bit of a gap of, what, just shy of 30 points to Alan Gassis. Jim Brewster, winner last time out at Mosport, lies, well, lies in fourth, but promoted up to fourth. It was really close that gap up on them. Rich Coffee and Wellbot equal on points for fifth. And it's Laurie Toms Ray, who finished second last week. And Murakami rounding out your top ten. Charles, welcome along. I mean, this track is quite possibly... Uh, this is saying for something, me being, you know, from the, rock, the opposite side of the you has probably the most recognisable corner in the whole of World Motorsport. Yeah. Uh, Tim, thanks for having me in. Yeah, it's, um, you know, the corkscrew as we see right here with Christian Kabanka. Yeah, five, five stories. Uh, just imagine a five-story building and you falling off the side of it. That's the, that's the elevation change coming through that corner. 
Uh, yeah, this, and this track is, you know, obviously it's a free track on iRacing service. Um, you know, legendary, lots of amazing uh, action has gone on here um, in every type of motorsport imaginable from all the way down to SCCA, all the way up to uh, IndyCar. So, uh, you know, looking like we're going to have a pretty, pretty big grid today for the Formula Fords. So it should be a pretty exciting race. 36 is what I'm roughly calculating there. This four drivers yet to put time to it. But Charles, you've you've teed this up beautifully without even realizing you do it. And Samuli's done it even better. So, you mentioned the SCCA. We can cut to Morgan Burkhardt. Now, this young man, wow. So, at the real life SCCA runoffs, managed to break a uh, 20 year curse, I'm going to call it. Stuck it on pole as a rookie the first time in 20 years that that has happened we see him regularly in the ray esports league that's midweek here on tuesday night or wednesday morning for some of us on uh, my side of the pond uh, here at apex racing tv but yeah i mean what what a, what a result and uh well pole position by three attempts at the moment yeah, I've had the I've had the pleasure of watching uh, Morgan. I've done a couple of uh, fill-in stints in the uh, in the uh, Ray Esports League on Tuesday nights, uh, and uh, he's just quick. In every car he jumps in, he's just fast. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, you know, it's obviously is no shock for him to be up on the pole here. Um, and uh, you know, barring any catastrophe, you know, he's probably the owns odds on bet to win. But we've got obviously. Some very fast drivers in here that are, you know, they, I don't think they don't run with Formula Fours. I don't think. I'm trying to remember uh, during the week. I know they run the MX5, the Spec Racer, uh, but I'm not sure they run the Formula Fours. So, uh, no, so no, we've got some. Don't. Yeah, yeah we've got well. some. Yeah, you know, we've got some. Obviously, some veteran drivers in here who run this run this car week in and week out. So, uh, yeah, he's quick, but we'll see if the uh, if the vets can uh, can tame him a bit. Yeah, the, uh, these uh, pesky young whippersnappers uh, showing everyone how it's done. But there's, ooh, well, there's the case of commentator if there ever was one. And a <laughs> Indeed. spin from Andrew Benner behind as well, no less. Uh, I never mentioned actually, it's one dri another driver I need to mention, it's new to the series. It's Dave Ogburn, currently lighting 11th. Now, uh, this gentleman, a little bit special about him. So, he was about in a four car breakaway with Morgan Burkhart to, with the last four, well, for pretty much the entirety at the runoffs. But also, he is a real world, well, SRF, we'll, hopefully we'll see him later on, um, driver. And also, he's a good year test driver as well. That's his main occupation. I mean, getting to destroy tires for a living. It's, it's not a bad show, really. I, I know someone else who, who does it uh, for Michelin, and yeah, just casually just rubs off. Yeah, you know, just um, flew over to Spa and uh, took a you know Porsche 911 GT3 round there for a few laps and just wrecked the tyres each lap to see what would happen for them. That's, I'd like for it for some. I mean, you know, it's you know, so, some people you know toil. Um, you know, and do do manual things, and then some people are like me and have office jobs, and then you know some people just drive cars for a living. And so, I mean, if you can get away with that, I think I'd probably I'd probably enjoy it. Oh yes, definitely, definitely. That is for sure. Uh, we've got two and a half minutes, two, three and a half minutes, which is left on the clock in qualifying. So, oh, Alan Degassi is top of Masters Bowl right now in A. And also, well, Old Ben, I mentioned him, he's in spec two. Now, I think that's a little bit deceptive of his, the quality and the caliber of him to be in spec two. Um, however, he is, as you should imagine, and, and should rightly be so, on pole in that category, um, 14, sorry, 11th overall right now. But uh, who is going to take it in these dying stages? That That is a big question. Yet to set time. So actually, who takes the track are Saunders, Toms, uh, Epe, uh, he's a new driver, Jean-Paul Epe, and Edgar Sanctionelli. Yet to head to the track. Just seeing that, yeah, it's Bino. Currently fifth overall right now, Charles. Just got faster than anyone in sector three. 
Wow, that's a, I mean that's a really great result, Topino. He's uh, he's not normally up there, but like I said, he's this is this done is in sector four as well just now, wow. Charles. Wow, he's on a flyer then. Coming down I here spy. to the last corner. My little eye, a new pole position potentially incoming here. Ooh. Let's find out though. As he crosses the line, watch him. Um, which it'll, it'll probably was shocking the first couple of seconds as well. Oh, no, it's only good enough for second by seven hundredths of a second. I mean, still a great lap, though. Um, you know, that's like I said, I think, you know, uh, for these drivers being on a free track, you know, not like we, you know, I think we had uh, Sandown last week for Spec Racer, which was uh, it's a great race, but it's not one of those tracks that are widely used i think this kind of evens the playing field a bit because i think everybody gets out that probably drives us you know drives during the week you know because we do follow the iRacing racing schedule for the most part and so they get out there and they can get on the grind and, and run two or three races and get really comfortable with the car and the track and for us older folk as well charles i mean uh, this track has been in uh, racing games since you know, the dawn of time really hasn't it, <laughs> sure, it it's, sure. yeah, I'm, I'm talking you know Gran Turismo 2 I think was the first one that came along in, in that and that's my sort of first sort of knowledge of the circuit um, certainly before quite a, quite, a, for quite a few years before numerous of these drivers are actually born which is scary indeed yeah indeed um, yeah it's uh, yeah it's been around forever and like I said it's you know, it's it's used in all the all the real ones, so it makes sense that you know every game um, or, or sim, um, you know, will would include it in in, oh, their, Charles, in their track I'm package. Cut across you because look at that. two laps in a row, goes second and then goes faster again. He has to be no. Wow, great lap, twenty nine six, and it's just so still so close, seventeen milliseconds faster than Burkhardt. That's hits and he's not yeah. going to get out again, so he's done this for qualifying, so he won't start on pole. To be no, I mean, realistically, looking at that time, and I'm not not seeing any purple sectors from anyone else. I think that could well be good enough for pole position for him. I Check if flag right. is out. There we go. So whoever's on, who's ever on a flyer, can finish the lap, and uh, we'll see if anything comes up. One to watch out for me, though. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, I was going to say, one to watch out for me is Alexander Wenger, who's currently fifth, third row of the... Sorry, fourth, third row of the grid. So second row. God, I'll get it out in a minute. Fourth, second row of the grid. I devoted him uh, there. Uh, highest eye rating driver in the field, Charles. 7,000. Um, 7,135. I'm being really pedantic here, but uh, <laughs> which, but those sort of numbers. I think the, the yeah the last three digits don't really matter too much. You can see the strength of field we we've got here today. Spec one 4.4k masters three. Spec two the inverted commas weaker of the two. 1900. Although that's very evenly spread um, across a lot of them, so they're all in and around that number. Yeah. I'm yeah, it's a, that's a really good strength of field. And so it, it's going to make for really exciting racing as you've got, you know, three or four good drivers that are 6K uh, or higher. And, you know, we can't, you know, we can't rule out people like York Monty sitting in P10 who's 6.3K. He's, you know, as a master's driver, he's no slouch at all. We've always, he's always up front in these races. Uh, Megan Overstreet's only, you know, 4.4, but she's, you know, she's been really, really strong over the last couple of seasons uh, for the Weekend Warriors leagues. One driver at well out of position, though. But it's, uh, two definitely, I would say so, are Antonio Ray starting 17th, mm -hmm. Richard Coffey starting 19th. They're down where, from where they normally are. I'm just having a bit of a look through. Oh, Chris Murakami. I didn't even spot he was in the session, Charles. He's that far down. 24th he'll be starting. 12th row of the grid. That's, that's a long way back for, for those drivers. And I think it's going to have to be the a bit of a meme accent 
on the entrance into the corkscrew for uh, maybe them to try and make up some positions or even turn six. I mean, that's a bit of a treacherous one, isn't it? <laughs> I was about to say you got to get you got to get through turn six before you get to the corkscrew, and that is uh, that's uh, basically it's the um, the Laguna Seca version of the kink at Road America. It's uh, very dicey. It is indeed. Let's have a go through the grid right now. Yeah, it's been, you know, put it on pole right in the depth with a scintillating lap, beating Morgan Burkhardt for those two to lock out the front row. Then we've got Kabanka and Venka on row two. Row three sees Overstreet and Hamanda line up alongside one another. And then it's Green and top qualifying masters Alan Degasius on row four. Top 10 rounding out by Oliver and Marnie. Then we've got Dave Ogburn, who's the highest qualifier and spec to in 11th. He's joined by Michael McConnell on row 6. Row 7, Thomas Renders and Andrew Benner. Then we've got Chris Montgomery next to Brewster with Race and Jacobson making up row 9. And row 10, the top 20, being an all-masters row of coffee and wall bolts. So who's organizer? Series CV Ray starts 21st next to Philip Fernandez. Then we've got Fabruge and Murakami on row 12. Row 13, unlucky for some, hopefully not, for Nelson and Harris. Sal Webster, so Webber even, I'm thinking of a uh, British soap opera character there. Uh, Jess, that starts next to Jesse Bodas, and then on row 15 and top 30, running out by Stevens and Chris Scriven. Chris Repress has got Kai Brendel for company on row 16. Row 17 is Toms and Saunders, although those two not setting times. And neither did Sanchinelli and Pepe. I think Tom's has joined the grid. I'm not sure about the remaining three as to whether they're going to make it. And with the safety car due to move off very, very imminently. Unless they pop in any second now. Well, there we go. It's rolling. Oh, very slow off the mark there, off the top two. Off and running. Give a safety gap, a safety car a little bit of a gap there. This first lap's going to be very, very treacherous. You're going to try, and uh, you know you're coming down too wide. These uh, these drivers have a tendency to make it three and four wide. This is a wide track. It probably can support uh, three and four wide uh, in most areas, but uh, you know the Andretti hairpin turn one two very 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 difficult you got to get the right line through there uh so i think it behooves everybody to try and get single file as quickly as they can and get that draft train started uh and then we'll see a really exciting race from that point forward so you know about tricky corners maybe they could uh, it's a lovely segue into our sponsor maybe they could do the assistance of ray phillips the owner of precision data analysis the ray has over 30 years of experience in most sport and race open 20 years of that time. He's found a new passion in helping others go faster and perfect their craft. He can fill the role of data and race engineer and also as a driver coach, helping other drivers get the most out of data and video systems. Now, Ray was a data engineer and driver coach for a 2019 championship winning Ferrari Challenge team, assisting multiple drivers on said team. Now, PDA also sells a wide range of data and video equipment that can help everyone from a high performance education driver to a professional driver or even a race team with multiple cars and drivers and no matter what you choose customers get the information that they need to go faster and have a good time on track and yeah, just, just help out in the real world but also helps sim racers to go faster while staying within their limits you can find out more about them by heading across to precision data analysis Bob, that's analytic, uh, analytics, sorry. I've got it's written there, uh, wrong I my own blurb there. Anyway, let's frame that nicely. Safety yeah. car is in. We've ground the final corner. And let's get ready to go racing for the first time in the Weekend Warriors this evening as we are green and we are away through the Kingdom Turn 1 down to Andretti Airpin into Turn 2. Hard on the brakes, everyone jockeying for position in these early stages. Look at that, three wides are plenty, even a bit of a four wide in the midfield there. Oh, no. And there's someone tag, someone around, and that is our Venger. Yeah, I don't know if there was, oh, there was some contact there. I don't know if there was contact or if he just kind of lost the rear trying to get on the brakes. 
uh, but definitely looped the car and he's fallen well back in the field. turns five and six build the momentum you need to really get the maximum out of these cars heading up the hill so easy to scrub a loose speed as stevie ray there going side by side with the bruges heading up the hill and also behind him harrison nelson side by side too everyone really going at it here hammer and tong these openly stages and they're still not done as they head it towards the corkscrew for the first time this evening can everyone make it through on this first pass especially when they're side by side like this trying to be the last of the late breakers but there we go all making it through a little bit gingerly for some but they're through yeah i think that was a probably a smart move to just get single file the tires were still a little cold uh you know it's 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 tricky enough to just make it on your own through that corner uh so yeah it's good on them to just uh, just be a little patient as what you kind of need sometimes lovely little move up the inside there from Andagasius to so Gray Oliver on Andagasius with Green looking to follow him through trying to find some space here the slot up the inside is Green and get the move done Marnie saying oh there's a great big gap there I want some of that too oh wow look at that Andagasius space of two corners drops three places down to ninth looking through the field Richard Coffey I said he was out of place he's at five spots already Murakami at five as well when I mentioned Antonio race he's actually dropped one place down to 18 still that uh, lots of racing to do here with well 38 minutes and uh, well, just under in fact left on the clock and oh Ooh, someone's around there who is that off oh that's Ray Oliver after that lovely little move into the final corner up the inside of Gassis and yes. he's going to fall pretty much to the back now I think you're right. Yeah, it's okay. So the the, the trick with uh, the or the uh, deal, did we have another spin? That was some more smoke. Yep. Uh, Antonio uh, race off the track. Off. And I think the other one was Chris Montgomery. Wow, it's early early damage for some of our uh, what I would say would be uh, pretty quick drivers. Mm, people to watch here. So race is it's a little bit skatey on entry. Oh, yeah. and then the. Montgomery had to check up and race just a passenger and all of that. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, the, so the, the deal with, uh, oh, we got another. Ooh, just hot Montgomery around here. again. Oh, and Coffee yep. after his great start, is yeah, heading to pit road. Yeah, Montgomery may have, like, suspension or wheel damage. He may have to just bring it to the pits. With Coffee in the 930. Oh, he caught the oh, curb and then gets yeah, rear-ended. Yeah. I think it's that Brewster. Yes, it, it is. I think it is. Bar a miracle, Jim Brewster won't be making it two wins from the last two rounds here tonight in Masters. As he falls down 12 places into 28. So, drivers do have one fast repair available to their name. Richard Coffey heading into the pits to utilise that this fairly early stage, but he will need to stop. His drivers are limited on fuel. Looking at this, with him stopping in about three, three and a half minutes, he will not get him home. He'll have to stop again. But back up the front, though, Burkhardt leads from Tobino. That's happened this lap because Tobino, last time around, Charles set the fastest lap of the race so far. Uh, nearest, damn it, three times quicker than Burkhardt. Yeah, so obviously there's a little um, issue here. We'll see the lap times to come through. And, uh, and we'll talk about some of the track, the track uh, features here that seem to be catching some of the drivers out. It's, it's perhaps, isn't it? it, it yeah, it's there. You know, it's not what we would say. It, we would call a sausage curb. They're just kind of this little, uh, basically, it's an apex curb. And uh, you just these cars, I don't think you're going to be able to deal with them very well. I don't think they like those curbs very much because they're a little bit higher than your standard you know, blue and whites that you see on uh, on uh, apexes and exits. You kind of saw a little bit there. Uh, that is a little bit of a softest curve as you see Ogre Street kind of climb over it. Um, so, you know, and, and, the, and the other part of this is we've already seen a couple incidents in turn six. It's just like we were saying, it's very tricky. You're uphill after five, and then you've got, you know, a basically a almost 90 degree kink uh, to the left and still continuing that climb uphill as we'll see uh, Wenger coming in here. 
Uh, and it's just one of those momentum cords, right? You want to, you have to bleed a little bit of speed off, but you want to kind of carry as much as you can to keep that run going up the hill. Now you hit that inside curb and you saw the Freeze results. Freeze in everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, as we get down here to the, uh, they're trying to go too wide into the corkscrew. Oh, and that didn't work. Oh. That was a lovely move from Vega there. I mean, just to slot it between the pair of them and, and just showcasing exactly what you were talking about in terms of carrying the momentum up the hill. He did it when the two drivers in front of him when they're going side by side and battling. Squeezed his car up the middle of the pair of them, but got caught out by, and I'm not too sure who it was who tapped him, maybe Fernandez? No, uh, yeah, so Fernandez on his left. Oh, I mean, look, it just gets yeah. better and better the more you yeah. watch him. That was a great run. Uh, yeah, they are breaking. Well, yeah. I'll try to outbreak one another. Thing of the English party. Yep. Yeah, he was. You know, he thought he had he had that uh, battle cleared, and it turned out that they said no. We're going to see how how deep we can send it, and the answer was too deep. Uh, so. Uh, so, you know, that's just kind of about, you know, the, um, that, and that was like, like you said, a prime example of turn six and what you have to do to make, to be competitive here at the track. Uh, but if you catch that inside curb, you're going for a ride. If you get too wide, you're in the, in the sand. Uh, or if you catch that outside exit curve wrong, it will spit you back into the inside of that corner, uh, corner exit. As you see him take the a little bit of the curb there, not too much. Uh, that was a nice run by Oliver coming up the hill. Off camera, Kabanka did come off track and um, has lost their place of it. So the street now ahead and up into the podium positions. There she is. Uh, oddly, Charles, I mean, normally it's a much bigger breakaway group, the top two. They, they've checked out into the distance and now we've got these two. And uh, then we've got another, well, everyone quite spaced out. A uh, bit of unknown territory to what we normally see. You see the trap map there, and uh, lap six, you know, a shorter lap here, one minute 30, at the best lap time in the racing position so far. But you can see those gaps really being showcased there from the trap map in the top right corner of your screen. How uh, spaced out we are at this early stage of the race. And most people don't, you know, maybe start thinking about alternative fuel straps potentially. I mean, we have seen the undercut work this season already. Yeah, I think the undercut might be a, might be in play today. And yeah, it's, it's, it's when the when you get contact in the middle of the pack, that's kind of where those gaps seem to come from. Uh, and you know, the one thing we haven't mentioned, we keep talking about every week is you get off track here and it's all sand. And sand is not, uh, you know, with the changes for iRacing with their surfaces, uh, you're going to be really slow and it's going to be very, very, you're going to be very off the pace trying to get back on track. So we're seeing a replay now. So this is what's happened to Dominic Howander. So he's lost place uh, to Jorg Marnie behind him. Ooh, there you yeah. see it. Yep, there you see it. And just how much speed he loses. Look at the gain that the cars behind are making on him just zip by. Uh, and so that's just a part of the new frictioning, you know, uh, uh, the surface modeling that uh, our racing's implemented. You probably would have got away with that previously, wouldn't you? Or certainly, you know, you would have been able to defend the position to Marnie, who I mean, practically well, like just walked past him. If if you could manage to keep it going the proper direction, you weren't in the wall. I think that's the that's the downside of that is, um, as we see, this is all kind of uh, concrete on the outside here. Uh, but... Um, yeah, if you manage to keep it off the wall, yeah, you could absolutely maintain some speed out there. But that's not that's not happening anymore. A little move on the inside there for Kabanka to reclaim third place in Ove Street. No real defense there from Ove Street. So to Kabanka, go on, off you go. Trying to follow you through here as they try to, well, chip away at that gap three seconds to the top yeah. two right now Charles three yeah, seconds it's, it's three seconds but still like you know, 30 minutes left in the race so they obviously have time uh, but obviously you know you know those guys obviously were setting really really quick lap times uh, you know the front to the front row of the of the grid um, from qualifying so 
you know, I don't know that anybody's got the, the, the pace to get back up there. Uh, we'll see. It's just, um, we'll see how it works. You know, it just takes one little slip on the track. You know, those guys, um, you know, Burkhard goes wide through um, one and two. And Tobino, you know, gets a little, um, you know, just kind of follows him around and uh, maybe follows him off the track. And the next thing you know, you've got a four-car battle up there. Now, Tobino's not always been the best on pit strategy. Well, Burkhard, we're being a bit of a newcomer to this. What's his going to be like? I think that's going to be the only saving of grace. Like a banker and Overstreet, certainly. I think realistically, looking at the time difference, you know, you've got Marnie and Co. They're a further four seconds back to so that second group of Kalanka and Overstreet. I can't see even with a bit of luck going on from the side and it bearing on to be, you know, really, really messing up your threats. As, oh, that is Chris really? Scriven around, and I don't think he's done it by himself either. That's a Let's see. Did he get some help? Let's see, we got a car coming to the inside. Yeah, no, he just did. Yeah, I think he's um, maybe just kind of missed his uh, brake mark and kind of locked it down and uh, and looped it. As we see Ogbert off the track. Oh, that's speech to it, Charles. Look at the Oh, no. Oh. Is he stuck? Yeah. Oh, that's horrible. That's stuck. Just about to turn that right rear. Like he's supposed to try and unwed himself here. Otherwise, it's. I mean, if, we had a, if we had safety cars in uh, road racing, was, uh, that would definitely be one. There. Yeah, that would it definitely would be, be a safety car. Yep, he's had to go. tow it. So, let's see how he manages to, manages to accomplish that. There's very few places on, on these tracks that it, you can beach it. It's obviously, I've, I've seen it before. I think I've probably done it once or twice. Oh. So he gets a little tap in the left rear. That gets him up in the up off the off the track, and oh, it's and just he, trying to get back on the track. He breaks for the traffic coming up the road, trying to do the honourable thing, but in doing so, beaches himself. Dear, that is bizarre. I don't think I've ever seen that before. It's, it's a beauty of uh, us watching and commenting on so many of these races isn't it you think you've seen everything and then someone surprises you uh, just like i've never seen someone nearly bin it coming down pit road normally it's in this tight curve part but stevie ray trying to reinvent new ways to lose it coming out of the pits here at laguna seca yeah for sure yeah yeah uh, the the exit here is pretty tricky um just you know on, on pit exit road itself and then trying to navigate your way back onto the track with traffic is uh, is also challenging. So Bridge to try and defend right now from Bodas, who's just behind. Two Americans scrapping out over 20th. I'm taking you on classes right now. Andrew Bennett leads spec two after, well, the unfortunate Ogburn beaching his car there and it's looking like it well actually no he's so sitting waiting in the pit so that's why he hasn't got going again yet uh, then it's Harris and the Bruges to run on the podium but they're well down in comparison to Benna they are currently presiding 17 and 18 Harris of 9 spots though uh, a good solid result so far however it's the Masters drivers that are holding that on so the top 3 places in terms of positions climbed you've got Murakami who's 3rd in class 30 overall 11. Then Brendel and Tom, so a 6th and 7th in class, 22nd and 23rd respectively, both up 10. But your podium is Marnie, Pegasius, and Murakami. You can see right there, there's uh, Murakami just trying to take on Jacobson just in front of us. Change for position overall, but not in class. Called Jacobson. Red marker next to his name, denoting he is in spec one. Yeah, this is kind of a little too cold. Oh, as we see oh. another with Fernandez and Bodas. Oh, looks like they had a little collision. And, ooh, and that was just a... I'd say that wasn't necessarily an unsafe rejoin, but um, you have to you have to give... Uh, the, the driver coming through has got to be a little aware because I think he was rolling in the proper direction and maybe... I'm not sure how that was... Uh, you know, how that all occurred. But that's obviously just a little spin... Too much, too much mustard through there. And then Botas says, I can do that too. 
uh, and then they try and collect each other as they rejoin. Yeah, and okay, so there it was. So Fernandez got restarted and then tried to move over um, to let the car coming go by, and they both moved at the same time. So that was the uh, the issue with that. Uh, yeah, it's tripping up over one another there. It's for certain. Yes. Just trying to work it. So, so, yeah, so well, that group is, you see on the screens right now, because I, I was thinking, well, hold on a minute. Brendel and Toms, they sail past these guys, but they've lost some time on track as well because of it. But right now, it means we've got our tightest, the biggest group on screen right now, 20th through to 24th. Fernandez, Stevens, Bodas, Brendel, and Toms all scrapping out over 20th. And a positioning class is available. And there's three of these drivers, the three at the front of it, are on spec two, and Brendel and Toms both being in the Masters category. Yeah, you definitely just want to keep racing at this point and just, you know, because it seems like that there's uh, some mistakes that are still yet to be made uh, during this race. So. The more you can keep the car on the track and keep your uh, keep keep it clean, uh, the chances are really good to move up a few spots. So we're going to have moving up spots. There's Oliver past Jacobson. Who then has Venga. He's driving a bit of anger right now. Of course, up in uh, yeah, well, issues where not being his fault today. Better drivers to come through the field with um, Oliver. Uh, those two definitely will be working together until we get deeper into this race, and then the gloves will definitely be coming off between those two as they start scrapping away more and more. So, for sure, Vinger obviously thinks he should be much higher up the grid because that's where he started, and then we had the little, um, little unfortunate spin at the beginning of the race. So he's absolutely driving. Uh, driving um, a little uh, oh, not a little over aggressive we'll say aggressively he's trying to make his way up and gain as many spots back as he can and it's we're at the 18 minute mark of the race and I haven't seen our normal first pitter yet uh, which is normally Stevie Ray uh, so maybe maybe the undercut not a good idea has he already pitted um, according to oh. producer Samuli Ooh, yes he has. he has oh wow he pitted on lap eight so he pitted five laps ago. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm fully expecting to start seeing people coming into the pits anytime. Yes, yes. Uh, be, I'm, I'm fascinated for a few of these to see how they play out. Whether we have drivers, you know, covering off one another, or we have people, you know, going one lap longer. Maybe the, the competitors. Not too sure how this one's going to play out. Oh, true. Yep. Oh, yes, of course. I, yep. Oh, yep. And I missed it also. There's uh, Benna around. Now, we didn't miss it, as Smiley's just uh, rightly pointed out, because we talked about how he had that massive tank slapper coming out of the pits. <laughs> we didn't miss it. I just forgot about it. So uh, yeah, we've had so much happen, to be fair. Um, can you tell I'm backpedaling, trying to cover us over here? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it has been action packed, no less. I mean, 19 minutes in, one minute off the halfway mark now. And well, there's only, Charles, four drivers who are currently in the position where they started. In the form of Kabanka, Hamada, Green, and Degasis. There is Kabanka, who's well, switched around with Overstreet a few times anyway, so has uh, dipped in and out of, of, of that club, so to speak. Uh, it turns to retirement so far. Perez, we lost him on lap eight. Ogburn, after beaching it, has decided not to come out again. Um, lap seven, that was Richard Coffey on lap two. Uh, disappointing for Richard, who obviously was uh, a little bit out of position, then had a really good start, and then it all fell apart for him. Sancinelli, Epe, and Saunders did not take to the start of the race. So six drivers down, although technically only really three. Uh, so so 36 entries with only 33 starters. Yeah, so we were talking about Kabanka and Overstreet uh, sw swapping positions. Uh, their lap times are actually getting really close to the two leaders. I wonder if this is kind of the, the leapfrog uh, from draft to draft 
uh, and they're just kind of helping each other along, and it's actually moving them a little bit close, not a lot, but a little bit closer to those two lead cars. Well, in fact, last time around, Overstreet did set the fastest lap of the race, Charles. So quite possibly, they're just, you know, metaphorically pushing each other along right now. As I mean, Overstreet was two tenths faster than our top two last time around. It'll be interesting when they come across the line this time. Well, how oh, great catch. That was a great catch. That's yeah. That's a that's one. That's a a very quick corner uh, coming uh, at the bottom of the hill there. That right hander that leads you down to to the final corner of the track. Uh, and yeah, she was. Um, that was at the. That was the limit, and she found it. And she, but she was able to hold on to it as we see people coming to the pits. Thank you. I think maybe trying to, well, either out breaking himself on pit entry there, Oliver just in front of him, uh, or. Trying to do the, well, the, the, I was gonna say the pass on the grass, but the, the pass in the sand here. So two rolling down pit road together, uh, looking like they're just having a bit of a chat about how their race has gone. Yeah. Oh dear. Had to the back up a little bit. So that is a shame. So this is on board with Venga. You know, we didn't mention mention this pit entry that um, when we were talking about Sandown last week. This is obviously very similar. There's no elevation, but it's a 90 degree right hander or left hander right in there, and you have to be you have to be uh, you know when you get to those cones, you have to be at the pit speed, um, and it's um, it's sometimes difficult to judge. I mean, if you, if you don't believe me, just ask Roman Gro Roman Grosjean. Yes, that, that that is a very very good point. That one. I think it's only really Spa that's worse. I would agree with that. Answers on the postcard if you can think of any worse ones than uh, pit exits, but entries or exits. The Spa is pretty treacherous on both. Uh, with this tight left-hander and then a right-hander on the exit. Or well, midway through the, the pits if 20 years than the endurance ones, but... Just oh, guess second in Masters. Marnie obviously leading that class. Five places into fifth is Marnie. Leap from Degasis, who was the top of the qualifiers in Masters category. There's Michael McCollum just behind him at this stage of the race. Lap 16. 23 minutes complete as that is Andrew Banner in from the lead of Spec 2. Oh wow, with a uh, uneventful pit stop hopefully ensuing for Banner can't see it, anything but him emerging after the pit stops have cycled through to yeah, come think, back out into the lead. Yeah, I think his lead for the spec two was pretty commanding. So unless there's a, a major issue, I would I would think he's coming back out once the cycle's done, back out on top in class. Ah. You well, know, we say that, and it's um. Oh, Venga has come back into the pits, Charles. And so has Oliver. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, I'm not sure what's happened to that. He got a stop and go because it was a 1.5 second. Well, stop. it would. Uh, Venga seemed to pull alongside, um, or uh, alongside Oliver, which did make me wonder. Well, you know, if he sped in the pits, right. did he get an unsafe pit entry where he was on the, the gravel? I'm not sure. But then why's Oliver come back in? That's very interesting. Well, and just yeah, heading yeah, out, right? You'll see him on the right-hand side of your screen there. Heading back out again. So, disaster race with a pair of them. Yeah, for sure. This is, this is not a race you want to try and make two pit stops in. Uh, we were talking about um, uh, Benna earlier uh, and uh, how he should have a commanding lead once his pit cycle is done. Uh, he his stop time was 22 seconds, which is much higher than everybody else. So we see Benjamin Harris around. Well, wow, that's he was running second before Benner took to the pits, Charles. So that's going to help Benner. Yeah, for his sure. His FS3 came lead. Um, Bruges still in pit road. So yeah, he's look, looking good for that one. 
Kai Randall up 15 spots. It's only kind of enough to put up the uh, number of stops that each car's made uh, for the race. We still have uh, the top 14 still have a spot, uh, as well as Brindle in P17. Randall, well, that's why he's up 15 spots to German at this stage of the race. So Andrew Bernard looking comfortable right now, so we claim our lead, although it's going to be a little bit closer than what maybe we saw before the pit stop started happening. But while we've been talking about this, Charles, Burkhardt has pulled out a 1.8 second lead on the Beano. He has lost quite a bit of time somewhere. I'm not sure whether it's just actually well looking at his, looking at his last lap time already 300 so second separating the pair of them yeah, I wonder if uh, Tamula can give us a lap comparison to see if there's maybe an issue that Tabino had on one of these last few laps that's caused this it's got to be the oh man I don't know whether it's consistent but there you go just went for that little, little bit of a stint there 14, 15 half a second and then three turns it's ebbing and flowing, but it's yeah. definitely ebbing and flowing more work, more the way of Morgan Burkhardt at this stage of the race. As there comes Tabino into the pits. Yep. Interesting. His stop. As we're getting down here to the uh, the the uh, the short end of this uh, race here. And why yep. that's interesting for me, Charles, is because Tabino sat in the draft of Burkhardt for quite a while. He did. So I would have thought he would have gone longer. I mean, just having a bit of a... They are encroaching on more and more traffic, so it's whether he's elected to be, you know, maybe to... See, you know, there's some, you know, pockets of traffic out there for our leaders. Uh, currently, Burkhardt has lapped everyone up to and including... B. Well, Antonio Race, you dig it. How many times have we ever said that? <laughs> I don't think I've ever said that. I think maybe the last time I said that was probably, you're talking about a year and a half ago, maybe two years, where he, it used to be electric in qualifying. But just always had either bad luck or just lacked the race pace in the SRF uh, Weekend Warriors. But... He's turned that all completely around, but today it's just not his day at the race. He's on board with Overstreet right now, Kabanka just in front of us. And Ooh, I wonder if these if these two cars working together can maybe close up oh, Burkhardt in the pits and Overstreet in the pits. Well, to finish off your point, Charles, <laughs> they're not working together anymore, are they? They're, they're not. And I was going to say, I wonder if the two car the two car draft is going to help them maybe close the gap a bit to Burkhardt since he was out by himself uh, after uh, Tobino pitted, but uh, that's, a, that's a moot point it's, it's here and now, so. Tobino came back out in eighth place. There comes Yogmani into pit road and pulls up at his box. Take on some more fuel. Burkhardt gets going again. Now, where is Tobino? That is the question. At least he's coming out of the final corner. Ooh. So I think this could be even a, a bigger lead here for Morgan Berger. Uh, we'll see how he handles the exit of the pits. Looks like that was successfully done. But yeah, two and a half second gap back to uh, back to Tobino. Which must mean that Tobino got caught in traffic because Burkhart stopped Charles. Well, uh, well, this is where it, it's, it's a stat to tell you two different stories here. So, <laughs> Tabino was stopped stationary for 1.2 seconds less than Burkhardt, but yet the whole traversing down pit road, including stopping, Burkhardt was overall faster by two to three tenths. I, I think that is uh, the indication of a, of a pro driver out on the track who has worked pit entry and exit, and he's got his timings down, you know, to a tenth of a second as far as how deep he can go before he breaks uh, and how much he can take, um, you know, coming in and going out. So um, I think that just may be an experience thing more than anything else. 
Top four, head down road as they are on track at the moment. Kabanka, Hammerdeck, Green and McConnell as that's to be no wide. And with that, surely goes his chance of winning here today. Burkhart leads Sabino. Well, where is he going to emerge? Well, the answer to that is in second. Next question, how big is that gap going to be? As Kabanka, oh, the rears up on Jacks, Charles. Looks well, like someone's taking on tyres. It does indeed. Um, and he's only took, looks like it only took rears. Let's see what his, yeah, his stop was 33 and a half seconds. So, um, that's just to me, Charles. Maybe he's, he's taking all four. That may be. Maybe same, but it obviously takes him out of that battle with Overstreet, who is now uh, has her sight set on Tobino, who's like one, who's 1.2 seconds ahead. Wow, this 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 changes things quite a bit, doesn't it? It does. Also, Hammonder is very close to Overstreet too, but he's closed that gap up a lot during the round of pit stops. Gas is very close to McConnell too. Uh, they've got Kabanka in the fight with them as well. Jason has Ray and Murakami behind him. So Ray, it's by the early stop, Charles. Has, it looks like it's worked for him because it does. he's leapfrog Murakami to get up into third. Yeah, he, he yeah, he's up into third. Murakami's right behind him. Um, and they're behind Jacobson, so it's uh, that's obviously not a, a battle for class in front, but it is behind. So now it's uh, for that final step on the podium, see if uh, Murakami can get by, by Stevie before the end of this race. It's going to be challenging, to say the least, but time's still on their side at seven and a half minutes left remaining here. Grand Fighter Laguna Staker in the... Formula Ford Weekend Warriors here on Apex Racing TV. So Marnie still leaves Masters, Degasis and Ray running out your podium there. The Bruges off the track. Uh, that is from third in spec two. He's down in 20th, but has a healthy gap of 14 seconds to Philip Fernandez, who's 21st overall and fourth in class. As that is Ray Oliver parking it by looks of things. It, it does indeed. Yep, just a toe back. Yeah, now, now that everything's settled out, the gap from uh, Ben and Harris is six seconds, or five seconds, I should say. Uh, so still got a good lead uh, to be leading the class. It just shows that mistake that he made, how much it's cost him, because I think he was leading the class by right about 12 to 13 seconds, if memory serves me right. Yeah, I think that's right. So, yeah, it's obviously tightened it up, but it's still... Harris has got a lot of work to do if he's going to try and uh, if he's going to try and catch Benna before the end of this race. These two still scrapping our way. We head into the business end of the race. Just keeping half an eye on those gaps for you. So, Tabino's managed to eke out another three or four attempts over Overstreet. As Green sliding his way past hammered up there it's green up into fourth so get quiet to jason green in before the pit stops after as he's come alive realistically after they finished yeah he's uh yeah have really talked about him today but he's you know one of those cars that we normally see up front Ooh, and is charles just, yep you that's ben actually benner who's leading spec two I can see he's not now. I think we're about to find Ooh. out uh, why. Yep. This is, he just kind of missed that first apex of the corkscrew and then had to wait on traffic. There goes Benjamin Harris into the lead of spec two, no less. Well, that was, you know, I just said he had work to do, and that was pretty easy work uh, by all accounts. Is uh, just uh, just keep driving around and wait for the uh, the guy leading to make a mistake. Harris's first win in the Yeah, Ben has managed to get back um, going, and he's about two and a half seconds behind Harris. There's uh, two Masters drivers, uh, Nelson and Wolbolt, between them. So, um, so it's still a possibility for, um, as we see Kabanka just a little wide there, I think he kind of misjudged that uh, 
yeah, he's having a little trouble there with that car in front. Uh, that's um, is that the gas? Yeah, yeah so McConnell there in front of him. Well, they're tripping up over one another, and he's losing a lot of time. And just can't seem to carry that momentum through. Find the right channel to slot his car into to start passing these drivers, which is clearly at this stage of the race faster than. There you go into turn one. Well, turn two official up the inside. That is Degasius dispatched off. Next up is McConnell, who, uh, being a spec one driver as well, like Banker, I think he might put more, a little bit more of a fight over eighth place. Like Banker had against Degasius for ninth. Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, obviously it's not going to be one of those he's just going to stop and pull over and let the guy go by. He's going to try and stay, stay in that position if he can. Well, we have got three and a half minutes remaining here. Too sure where that time's gone, if I'm honest. <laughs> it's not that long ago since we're saying, oh, we're just approaching half race distance now. For sure. Let's, hey, let's give a shout out to Thomas Renders in P7. He's up six spots. It's having a good race, a quiet race, which is sometimes better than anything else. So quiet. I don't think we've even mentioned him uh, so far this evening. There he is. Yeah, just, just circulating around the track, keeping his car clean, and and uh, trying to get these last uh, three minutes or so done. Inside the top ten, we've got two battles emerging. This is one of them. Who are these? Say, so imagine these three have been all nose to tail for the last couple of laps. Asuka Banker finally clears the last of them in the form of Michael McConnell in the end. Uh, relatively Ooh. easy, but runs it in deep and could lose two places here. Yeah, so that was a, uh, as we see, looks like through. Yeah, he did get through that time. So he just waited for the track to come to him and uh, was able to make that pass stick finally. And now the gases of McConnell are battling, and that's going to help out Kabanka for sure. It's going to allow him just to scamper away up off the track and put some fresh air between himself and these two. The other battle we've got going on is Overstreet versus Hammonder over the last place in the podium overall. I'm oh, sorry, apologies. Hammonder's next to Cream. Apologies. I've, I've read that my eyes have deceived me uh, when I was following the lines across on our live timing. So, it's okay. So, Overstreet for looking good for that third place, but Hammonder right now not so sure about fourth place because Jason Green is really breathing down his neck. Yeah, it's a really tight battle here at the end of the race, which is good. It's something to something to keep an eye on here as we see Green. Yeah, he's uh, you know Green's like I said had another one of those quiet races where you know normally he's up in the front battling, but um, he was a little further back today, and but he's worked his way up to the top five and seeing if he can get another spot before the race is done. Antonio race here on screen, fighting with Jim Brewster. Yeah, they're close come the end of the race. Uh, it's, it's like an accordion, isn't it? Everyone just sort of spaces <laughs> out, and then come the end, we're building to a crescendo, and they all come together. It's Ray trying to find that outside line, trying to get it to work for him. This is against yeah. Jake, and he's going to get it. Lovely he's got look. it, yeah. Yeah, that move, uh, that uh, outside end between turn two and turn three, looks like it's working quite well. But he's not clear of him, Johnny Charles. No, he's not. And this is what he needs right here. He needs these cars side by side through the corner. That's and a little wheel touch there. That's going to help him just eke out a little more gap as we pass an elapsed car. Still fight. Yeah, Murkami's still trying to find his way around Jacobson. Try and get back up there to battle Ray. I say, ah, he's going to get it done. He needs to get it done because that clock is now running into overtime. And they've got this lap. Plus one more lap to complete. I think this is, I think this is going to be the, uh, yeah, the, for the leader, this is the white flag lap. I, I was looking at it. I'm not sure. Yeah. I, it's very close. 
find out when he comes up to yeah, the line. We, we will indeed. We will indeed. Yeah, it was... Oh, oh we did hear from Tamula. This is the last lap, so... Um, so, yep, yeah, so this is, uh, you know, Burke Hard safely out in front. To be no second, Overstreet third. Uh, still got that battle between Hammeter and Green for the top five. And just like we've seen the timing tower change and Murakami's got by Jacobson. Or has he? Yes, he has. Running out of time. Well, run out of time and running out of yeah. opportunities now, aren't they? Well, I'm going to say the gap's now five seconds between Ray and Murakami and Jacobson. So I'm going to say they had a little uh, issue at some point on the track. It's the winner. It is also, I didn't even realize yeah. it was Morgan him. Morgan Burkhardt takes the win. So far in front, he wins over to Bean. I was looking at the battle. This battle this is going back and forth and green. Leapfrogging everyone here. It's going to finish up three places in fourth. Overstreet completes your podium. There's your money with the win in Masters. Gassius will come along for his line in second in class. Oh, there's Murakami. He's third. Right. Can he lose any more places? There goes Harris. Ben and then Walbolt. But those two very close together. Should be okay, though. Yeah, they get something enough at this point. Did Murakami just decide to pit? See. Okay. Um, well, if he's got a penalty to serve, he won't be able to serve it. No. I thought they'll be, con I, well, it's a normally that will be converted to a time penalty by iRacing, but not sure what they do for the league, to be fair. Uh, but that did uh, that did uh, secure Stevie Ray with the with the third place in Masters. And, Just need uh, to say, Benjamin Harris stalling out the win there with the slide, the drift. Nearly the 360 across the line to win a Masters. First win of the season. I'm trying to think if that's oh, his no. best win ever in the Formula 4. Is he out of fuel? Yep. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I think it's just the relentless pace that Burkhard put on display here today. That's, I mean, that's just what's maybe pushed it an extra lap. Because when he came across the line, I was trying to judge it, and it was incredibly close. Yeah, that, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. But I did drop that, you know, running out, that dropped Fernandez out of the podium for spec two and elevated Stevens up to third in spec two. Yes, it did, didn't it? Wow, all change. But the depth. I'm going to have to get you some classified results. Bark and Burkhart wins here. In the Formula 4 weekend, Warriors from Laguna Seca. Tabino in the end, only good enough for second. Overstreet up to third. Two places in the end for her. Then we had Jason Green, and then your winner in Masters, Yogmani. Hamada renders Kabanka. A disastrous pit stop really cost him dear. He finishes eighth. Then the gas is second in class. McConnell running out his top 10. Ray onto the podium in Masters and finishing 11th. Then Jason. Then our top two. A mistake late on from Bennett cost him dearly. And that allowed Benjamin Harris to claim the victory elite here today with Bennett finishing just behind him in 14. Then we've got Warbolt, Brewster, Race, Stevens. As you rightly pointed out there, Charles, nicking out the death because for Fernandez ran out of fuel. Those two 18th and 19th respectfully. Third and fourth in class. Murakami running out the top 20. Last driver on the lead lap. One lap down. We had Nelson, Verbruge, Montgomery, Bodas, Sprendel, Scriven, Weber. Five laps down. In fact, we're into the retirements now. So Weber left the lap, lost the lap 22. Oliver on lap 20. Tom's on lap 19. Venga on lap 15. And then lap 8 was Perez. Lap 7, Ogburn. Coffee on lap 2. Cincinnati Saunders and Jean-Paul Lepe did not make the start. Let's have a bit of a chat to some of our drivers. And, well, that, not a bad day at the office. Morgan Berghard joins us now. Uh, Morgan, um, I I mean, you made that look like a bit of a walk in the park. Well, uh, it, it definitely wasn't. The first uh, six or seven laps were a bit sketchy. The uh, I didn't get the car to come up real quick, and I was kind of just holding on for dear life, trying to 
keep it on the black stuff but uh the last 20 or so where it the car hooked up really well i got pretty lucky with the pit stop nailed that and uh yeah just smooth sailing being consistent and making sure i hit all my marks I mean, on the pit stop, I mean, Yao Tabino was stationary for about a second, 1.3 seconds less than you. However, the way you just, I mean, must have absolutely nailed it. Uh, it meant that actually overall, throughout the pit stop, you were actually quicker because your pit entry and exit. I'm guessing that must be something you've been putting a lot of practice into. Uh, no, actually, I just, I've, uh, <laughs> I've had, well, um... just, just make everyone depress Morgan, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> I I don't I don't know I I usually do pretty well with the pit entry pit exit kind of things and uh, I've had some some practice with that a few seasons ago with uh, the Jetta Cup cars, um, but yeah I it I kind of just treat it like an extra corner and usually it ends up okay. <laughs> Well, it did for you today. Absolutely a dominant display in the end. Morgan Burkhardt, congratulations. A victory here from Laguna Seca. Thank you very much. Charles, who have you managed to grab for a chat? Well, let's talk to our uh, Masters class winner, Mr. Jorg Monty. Jorg, uh, so the race was a little, um, a little hectic there at the start. Um, and we had a couple of gaps opened up really early from some spins up to the front of the pack. Uh, so how did it, how did it look from your uh, out of your visor? Good day, me first of all, and uh, thank you for having me here. And uh, it was actually quite pleasant. I was a little bit shaking at the start uh, because I haven't done any laps this week at all on this track, and like on the SRF track as well, nothing because I had holidays. And uh, but otherwise, it was quite a fun. Except I don't know how to train those bloody pit stops, but uh, I think I have to do something now. <laughs> Otherwise, it was fun. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll give you the uh, what the race winner just told us. He said he just treats it like another corner, and it seems to work out for him. So, ah, all right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it was a uh, uh, so uh, congratulations on your win. Uh, it's back to back to form for you, top five overall, and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next race. Yeah, I'm gonna be in it. So thanks a lot, guys. All right. And uh, we've got just not enough time to squeeze in our third place finisher. Megan Overstreet joins us now. Uh, Megan, um, it seemed like a bit of a challenge out there today, especially with the car. I know you like drifting it, but we caught you a few times on camera. Uh, nearly, nearly losing it. Oh, it was so fun driving this car around Laguna Seca. Like... To go fast, you do have to be sliding and making good corner entries, which I got the second part right, but not the first part most of the time. So I was struggling a little bit there for most of the race until after pit stops where I'd finally gotten settled down and was doing half decent. But the lap down traffic made it very difficult to uh, fight with the L there at the end, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's just talk about that traffic. I mean, I was surprised that the amount of people that managed to fall a uh, lap down here today. Uh, did you tend to find that with certain corners that, that it was more treacherous with the traffic than others, or was it just in general? Mostly in general, but uh, the corkscrew was definitely the worst place to get a, a lap down car. When I was uh, catching Yao, uh, a lap down car missed the entry on the uh, corkscrew. So I went to their inside and they just cut down right in front of me. So I had to slam on my brakes and we just barely avoided killing each other where we got a zero X, but that lost me a second and a half on Yao and there was no making that up. Well, congratulations on the podium. I'm not a bad day at the office overall. All things considered, that is a Megan over the street. Uh, that's all we've got time for here today for now from the Formula Fords, but coming up in a little bit about 40 minutes time myself and charles will be back for the srs make sure you join us for that one but well laguna seca it's an absolutely iconic track i pulled out some iconic displays we'll see you in a week's time for the formula force when we return at mid ohio no less that's gonna be an interesting one to say the least as part of this well triple header of american tracks in the series but for now for myself tim cox charles michelle and samina mate thanks very much for joining us and we'll see you in a week's time